Okay, so we've been looking at um, Manticore the last couple of days, got it running, but what does it mean? I mean, we looked at data. One of the, the key things that it focuses on is coverage. Now, it's the, it is a tool that uses what they call dynamic symbolic execution. So it explores the program and it can mathematically figure out what path exists in the program. But what it does is if you don't, if you can't do it that way, you use um, concrete values to, deter to get an idea of what, what's supposed to be done. So they're constructed so that you, you use the path predicate, you can do the constraints, you generate program inputs. So in this case, it's very easy. If it's 65 or it's not 65, you have two paths. Um, in this case, we're testing for overflows and path one is the A is equals A plus B. Or you can say, well, what happens if there's an overflow? Then that's a different path. So that would encourage you to do this fixed version, which tests this. Remember, require in uh, solidity. So I found this paper, I guess when it was written, and it's an academic paper on um, that, that goes into depth on this. Um, but basically, you use the two key ideas is you start the symbolic execution or seed it by executing program on an initial input. And then you use concrete values if you can't do something symbolic, if you can't mathematically work out the path. So let me see, they go into it. Um, executing P on some input, deciding the, the feasible path. So when you can't do it, like this is a very simple example. So you got F, uh, max. And then you could the maximum four values. And it's the, the paths are very straightforward here. So either A is less than B, A is less than B, and C is less than D. Wait, sorry. A is less than B for one zero. Oh, that's one. Not A um, less than B, and C is less than D. Or A is not less than B, and... C is not less than D, and A is less than C, and that those are the paths this can take. Now they also in this paper discuss some small programs that can be very hard to do it to analyze symbolically. So then you would use um, uh, you would take an input and. Well, now we're getting academic here. So you you can use hot inputs. You can use concrete inputs to determine uh, the different path. So as you can see, it can get pretty deep. And uh, I've just glanced at this paper. I just found it tonight. But this this is a uh, this goes into it in great academic depth. Uh, let me, it doesn't give me a date here when this was written, but I think the abstract gives you a basic idea. So what this tool Manticore is trying to do is look at all the paths and try to cover them. Um, let's see if we can get back in here. Okay, so let's look at what we got here. We have, this is um, the output of running 
the overflow test so let me uh simple simple that uh overflow with that go mapping here no simple simple and end overflow so let's look at that Make sure you're seeing it. Yep, you are. Simple. And. And. So all it does, it's adding a balance to a value. And by calling the function add. And it has an assert if the balance is greater than the value. Because that shouldn't have that indicates an overflow. So we did. Um, so we ran it, and it produced produced this a bunch of output. The uh, let's see. And it got eighty percent coverage and the whole bunch of the transaction there was only one user and you can see so all the calls it made it, it made a call with zero it made um a function call Transaction two, it made a function call to really overflow of type numbers, made a function call with a smaller number, um, symbolic solution. And means it can take other values. I guess return, guess it's, they, they uh, was able to solve it symbolically. So this is what it did, um, the create. So the return was a transaction, uh, I guess the uh, contract ID when you do a create and just the different things that come out. Um, there was really nothing in global findings. Um, Global solver stats, there was very little there. Timeout zero, unknown zero, and I'm not sure what Z3 is. And we saw the transaction, it does a trace, you can trace to the assembly. Um, and look at the uh, I guess it created its, it does it creates its own uh, global underscore. I think this is just the yeah this is just the code. So it kind of makes like its own its own copy of it. And um, but you can see it's 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 analyzing it to try to get coverage. And um, it produces constraints. Now, the constraints are still confusing to me. Um, let's user. So, declare as a function. And declare, it's declaring functions. And I'm function data, function s value, byte code. And it's really, so this is it's going through, running it, trying to do the analysis, is what I'm guessing this is. And it's putting these constraints on to try to get all the paths possible. Now you would think this wouldn't be that 
complicated, but, um, you know, if we saw earlier, sometimes these simple functions can be quite complex. So anyway, um, you can, you can see the different things that come out of it. And we were looking at this last night as well, but the whole idea takes your solidity contract. It uses the combination of solving the, the algorithm mathematically, as we saw at the simple case, um, and in some, if it can't do that, it'll put in a value and see what comes out, and that helps it do the other, you know, paths where it can't just simply uh, determine what they are. And then it comes out and it, it tries to get full coverage. And uh, notice there were no findings here. I don't know if I've seen any findings on any of these things, but um, curious. What else do we got? Um, Re-entry. Oh, that's 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 probably uh, running. Let's see something. So this is like that example that we saw. The value greater than 10, less than 10. Um, now, I'm, now I want to actually run and see what happens. Uh... Let's see what we get out of that. And it's doing its thing to a live state one term. So it's generating test cases and And you can see it did a, came out with the similar files here, but I'm curious if it had, and of course in this case, it had three users. Um, global summary. It got 85%. And again, I could this, let's see, on this particular case, it got 55. Um, and got eighty five there. And and so you can see it's doing it's getting about eighty five coverage on these things. Um, let's see what the con I'm now I'm curious what the constraints look like. You can see it's adding asserts equals 
away. Yeah, I'm going to have to look up what that, because I'm sure it's valuable. I just don't know quite what it is yet. But you can see the summaries are valuable. It tells you, um, I don't know if we had any findings. Uh, no. Global, global sum. Let's see, what is it? Volvo dot solver again, time out and unknown has not seen one come up with a, anything in findings which is interesting we can also do the um so it's a call from address name attacker to address contract value and this goes through all the transactions in JSON form, there's a create call from to to name contract zero, and here's another one from to, um, and then I put another value in, and Showed how much gas it used. Interesting. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I think we have a little bit more of an idea what this is doing. And it's basically analyzing the program and trying to get the best coverage possible. Um, which, in view of a complex algorithm, of course, you're going to save time versus trying to, you know, something a tester can manually look at all the paths. And um, so, if this has been helpful, please give a like. Uh, please share it, share it with your friends who are interested. Please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get, for, you know, future videos. And uh, I will speak to you next time.